I greet the whole church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Um, I'd like to kindly invite the church to stand up. We do this in reverence to the reading of the Bible, the Word of the Lord. In this moment, we'll read in the Old Testament, the book of Esther. Chapter 5, Esther, Chapter 5. We're going to read verse 3. After 5, verse 3. And the king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you up to half of half the kingdom. The church may now sit down.
Glory to God. The text that we just read, it pictures a moment that was very difficult in the life of a woman and also of her people. Esther, she was a woman who had all the reasons to be the rich, uh, happiest woman of her time. Look, she was amongst many, she has been chosen to be the one that was going to be the queen that was going to be dressed up with a royal clothing and that was going to have a crown upon her head that was going to be uh, close with the king. But you know, at this moment, Esther was not happy. And you can ask, oh, but she had everything. It's true. And there's nothing wrong with having everything. But sometimes man has everything. But in spite of having everything, many times man's heart is saddened. And Esther, she was sad because upon her and upon her people there was a judgment that had been established and it was a, it was a judgment of death. And all of those things they have been brought to her presence into her knowledge. And there was only one way, the Bible says, there was, there was only one way for her and her people to be uh, delivered from this judgment. And it was told to her, look, you need to enter into the presence of the king. And when you enter into the presence of the king, Queen Esther, and when the king look upon you and you finding grace upon he, the king's eyes, he will extend his uh, staff and you will be able to ask whatever you want. And it will be done. But, and there was a but. It is known that who, whoever that enters into the presence of the king without being called first. The king is not pleased with that person. That person will be worthy of being killed. And Esther, when she heard that, I can ask you, you think that she was afraid? Of course she was. But it was told to her a word that was very deep. Because if you are silent during this time, uh, there was not going to be rest on uh, your house, and the house of your father will perish. Those things, they have been said to Esther. And she then she sent a message to Mordecai, her uncle, and she said, Let us establish a, a fasting, a period of um, uh, during three days that the, my own servants, the whole Jewish people, for three days and three nights, we are not going to eat, we are not going to drink. And it will shall be that after those days that I will enter into the presence of the king. And if I perish, I will perish. Then, and after those three days, the Bible says that Esther, she dressed up with uh, royal robes. And now she 
enters into the interior patio of the king. The Bible says in front of the king's dwelling. And the king was, the Bible says that he was sitting on his royal throne in the royal house. The Bible tells us that it happened that when the king saw Queen Esther that was on the patio, you know what happened? She found grace in, on the king's eyes. The Bible tells us, my brother, that the king now does something. He points his staff towards Esther. And the staff, the children uh, already studied this. The staff is the symbol of the authority of the kings. And the kings, all of their staffs, they were made of out of wood. But the staff of the king Asuero was made out of gold. It was typifying the power. And today, you're bringing this message here. Because the King Jesus is here in this place. And he is extending his staff towards you. Because even if you are here with your heart saddened, even if you are here going through moments that you, sh you didn't want to go through, even if you have come to this place, thinking there is no solution to your problem. I want to tell you that if the king during the days of Esther had power, the king Jesus is the one who has much greater power. It exceeds to any power. Because when power, man's power is finished, that's when the power of the Lord begins. So Asuero extends his staff towards Esther. And he tells her the following. What do you want, my queen? Because he knew that she would only enter into his presence without being called first. If she w was, she w were going through a great trial and anguish, great sadness, a great need. And today, maybe in fact, we, we could have been in any other place, but, but what moved us to be, to be here is the fact that we are poor and needy. What we moved us to come here was the fact that we know that in this place, the king will be present every night, and he will ask, what do you want? I'm going to mention a few names. What do you, you want, Peter? What do you want, Rafael? What do you want, Cristina? What do you want, Marcus? What do you want, my brother? What, what is afflicting? Your, what is giving anguish to your heart? So Esther made a decision. I'm going to the presence of the king. This is the only way for me to uh, uh, be delivered and my people be delivered. Man has been walking on many paths and walk, knocked on many doors, maybe searching for help, words of encouragement, comfort, in many places. But there is only one place where it's, it's enough. It's to be in the presence of the king. And today you are not in my presence. You are in the presence of, you are not in the presence of any man. You are in the presence of the, the king Jesus. And he extended his staff towards you. And what Asuera told to Esther, what do, you what do you want? Ask whatever you want. Even half of the kingdom will be given to you. So to Esther was offered half of the kingdom. Is it, is it little? No, it's a lot. But today the 
King Jesus is bringing you tonight and he extending his staff to, towards you and asking, ask whatever you want. And he's going to give you a hundred times more on this life and then the future life and eternity. Eternal life, blessed be the name of the Lord. I usually say, as we conclude this short message, that there is no better investment than to serve Jesus. What is the application? What is the investment in this world that earns a hundred times more? Is there, is there anyone serving the Lord, being His presence, the presence of the King, is the assurance that He will answer our petition and that He will extend His staff towards us and that He will bless us because He's King, because He's the Lord, because He's good, because He's wonderful, and because He can do all things. And now I ask you, was there deliverance for Esther? Was there deliverance for her people? And the answer is yes. Because she went into the presence of the king. She found grace on king's eyes. The king extended his staff and she asked what she wanted. And she was answered. And I tell you, by faith, ask to Jesus what you want right now. Because the king is in this place and you want to bless your life.
given a couple of um, spiritual gifts for the service. The servant had um, a vision of a man has a clock in which he is very um, firm with his commitments using this clock. But the Lord wants to bring this man to, this, to know the clock of the Lord because the clock of the Lord is prophetic. And also in another vision, I saw that during the service tonight, angels were inside of the church, around the members of the church. And inside of the temple, I, I saw that there was a fire that came from heaven. But the fire would not burn the bread. But it was cleansing us. It was purifying us. It is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. It also brings joy to our hearts. And the Lord also shown that there was, I saw a dark room with a lot of um, old stuff. And I noticed that this room was closed for a very long time. And this room belonged to a woman. But during the service, a light was shown upon this room. This bedroom, this room may, may typify your, your heart, your life, and our hearts. Our life. It's not a place to um, keep things that they they are not good for us. Our heart is not a place for sadness because the Lord has created us for uh, pra praising His glory. Uh, there is a song that says, uh, a, s "A heart that loves the Lord cannot be sad. A heart should not be placed for." Uh, anger and bitterness and many things but a heart should be the temple of the Holy Spirit amen I'd like also to sing a song what can the Lord do after this song we're going to pray bring it to, to a close and we're gonna, you're gonna I'm gonna ask you to place your life in the presence of the Lord if you came in the presence of the king.
Only the women singing. Only the women. And the man praising the Lord. to God. Blessed be His name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When uh, our God, the first, second, third, fifth day, He was creating all things. At the end of each day, the Lord would say, I seen that it was good. But when God created man, he said, God said that he said it was very good. And the passage of the Bible said that great things the Lord has done for us. And that's why we rejoice. Because we can recognize that God has prepared all things for our lives. A happiness in, on this earth and a happiness that will continue in his eternity and you my brother and sister you who visit us tonight you are invited to participate on this kingdom because today once again the Lord Jesus has has pointed his uh, staff towards our lives we praise you Lord we're thankful because you have a grace, because of favor, because you have a great love, which is great and unconditional towards us. We we'll praise you, we we'll give you praises, because once again, tonight, you are prayed uh, salvation this place. Blessed be your holy name, because great things you have done towards our lives. Bring us home in peace under your protection. We we'll pray and praise, give praise to you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great love of God, 
in the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the Lord's people now and forever. Amen. Amen. The church may sit down. Our service has come to its end. You, uh, men and women who came here, if you need a prayer for your life, uh, explanation for the gifts that were given, stay where you are, raise your hand so we can identify and give you, therefore, the proper assistance. You are already invited to come other times. We have service on Wednesday and Thursday at 8, Saturday at 7.30 p.m., and Sunday morning, Sunday school, 7, 10.30, and Sunday night at 7.30. Everyone is invited to come back to this place. And I also want to remind that in December, day 15, 16, and 17, we're going to have the seminar which is going to be done in the region of Orlando. The brother that want may uh, begin their subscription. If you have a hard time, subscribe and look for Brother Liz and the Dickens and Ashes of the Church so that they may help you out in this uh, registration. The information are there. But if you desi desire more information, the brethren are here to, give the, to offer you the service. If you desire assistance, just raise your hand. I'd like to remind that in November we're going to have here a seminar with the children, intermediary, and adolescents. And it's also a reason for us to, for the church to be praying for this matter and inviting for others to come and participate in this moment so special.